All right, so we've got ourselves, just as a little review here, we've got our dog tester code. I need you to keep your voice down, Mr. Roth, though. All right, so here is the basic dog code that we wrote the last time we were together. Uh, we did this part one already, right? Yeah, okay. So we created this one dog, I called it Luna, and then we printed the information about the dog, then I printed a blank line, and then I created a second dog called Sunny, and then we printed the information about Sunny. So let me just run this for you one time to show you where we were. And here you can see all the information about Luna is first printed, and here the information about Sunny is first printed. And the last piece of code that we wrote in the dog class was this method called a two string. And we said that the two string method is useful for the compiler because when you tell it to print uh, a particular object, the first place it looks is in the class definition for a two string to know how to print the object. And here are the explicit instructions for how to print a dog. Notice that the two string does not print anything. What it does instead is it returns a string that is then printed by the printer over here. Okay, so the two string does not have any print statements inside of it. Now, we also, when we first created this code, we created the getter methods that allow us to retrieve information about the dog. Then we wrote the setter methods that allow us to change information about the dog. And we had these as the variables or properties of the dog. And we said we're going to track three pieces of information about the dog. We're going to track the name, the age, and the weight. Now, let's go back to our tester code for a second. And let's look at, I'm going to turn off all the code for Sunny right now because we don't really need it. In fact, uh, let me show you how to turn the code off. I'm going to turn this into comments for the moment just because it, I don't want to have two pieces of dog code showing up on the screen. It's going to confuse us. We're just going to focus on this Luna dog here for now. And I'll turn this code back on later. Uh, but you notice that in order to create a dog, look at all the things I've had to do. I've had to first instantiate the object. Then I have to tell the dog its age, its name, and its weight. It would be nice if we could accomplish all four of these tasks in a single line of code. And we can do that if we create something in the dog class called a constructor. And that's what I'm going to talk about next. And we're going to make multiple constructors for the dog class. And the first one we're going to make is going to be called the full featured constructor. So let me show you that one. It's going to be public dog. And we're going to say string new name int a new age and double new weight like that and what i'm going to do in here is i'm going to set the name equal to the new name the age equal to the new age and the weight equal to the new weight like that all right, now this particular method is unusual in two respects. First, I told you that methods have a return type. Here you can see this two string method returns a string. This getter get name method returns a string. The get age method returns an int. And then down here on the setters, when we don't have a return type, we put the word void to indicate that this method does not return a value. But this constructor method is unusual because there is no return type here, not even void. We don't even put void there. We don't put anything there. The other thing that's unusual about this method is that the name of the method is exactly the same as the name of the class. You can see the class is called dog and the method is called dog. This constructor is called when we construct a dog. When the dog is born, this method will get called. So to take advantage of this method, what I'm going to do over here is I'm not going to need this code anymore 
I'm going to do it all on this line when I create the dog. So I'm just going to go like this. Look. Like that. And the reason I can do that, and if you're wondering why it has to be this particular sequence, is that the constructor says first you give it the name as a string, then you give it the age as an integer, and then the third argument is going to be the weight as a decimal number. So I have to present in my test code, the constructor call has to have the arguments in the same order that they're defined in the constructor. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of this code because I don't need that anymore. And what I've got now is a single line of code that allows me to call the constructor for Luna. So now I'm able to not only create the dog, but populate the dog with all of its properties all on one line. And now when I print the dog, I'm going to get the exact same results. So let's look at that for a second. Here we go. And you can see that I've got all the information for Luna printing. What I'd like you to, to, to do now, oh, let me do this. Let me make a modification to the two string. And I'm gonna get rid of these backslash ends so everything about the dog prints on one line. I'm gonna put a space in here so that the words don't run together, but this will be a much simpler two string. Let's run this shorter version first. And now you can see I get a single line that has all the information about the dog. Uh, let me show you that one more time in case I did it too fast. I took out the backslash ends and replaced them with spaces. And what I'd like you to do now is I would like you to replace this code here. I'd like you to get rid of all this code and replace it with a single constructor call, please. So get rid of all this code and put the information right in there. Yes. Uh, it's capital Stanford one two three. So only the S in Stanford is capitalized, and then one two three. Okay. So to do that, I'm just going to go like this, like that. We don't need this code anymore. And we're going to compile and run it. And here is the two pieces of information about the dog. This is the first dog. That's the second dog. OK. So that is how you do a constructor. We're going to write a different constructor now. This is known as the one we wrote so far is the full featured constructor. Now we're going to write what's known as the zero argument constructor. And as the name implies, this one will take zero arguments. So we're going to go like this, public dog, and I'm not going to give it any arguments like that. And here, we have to decide if someone creates a dog and doesn't give us any information, what should we set the name, the age, and the weight to? What would be good values to set if they don't tell us anything initially? So let me get a volunteer from the audience here. Mr. Gabe, sir, if you, if you created a dog and you didn't give it its name, what would be a good name for an unknown dog? Huh? Unknown? I like it, sir. So let's go with name equals unknown, like that. And uh, the age, what should we set the age to, Kevin, if we don't know what the dog's age is? Uh, we can't put unknown here, sir. And can you tell me why I can't do that? No. What kind of variable is age, Kevin? It's an integer. Is this an integer? Okay, so we need to put an integer here. What would be a safe integer to use, Kevin, if we don't know the age of the dog? I guess zero would be good. And Kevin, while I have you here, what would be a good a a number for the weight? 
0, 0.0 like that. Now, I want to show you in the tester class, if we were to create another dog, first of all, let me put another blank line. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't even need this anymore. Uh, let's create another dog. We'll call this dog W, and I'll say new dog this time. Notice that this time I'm calling the other constructor because I did not put any information in here. So when you put all the information in there, it knows to call the fancy constructor, the full featured one. And then when you call the dog constructor and you don't give it any information, it need, it knows to call the simpler one here, the zero argument constructor. So now if I go over here and then I print the information about this dog, like that, you'll be able to see that it will print all the information in the default constructor now. So let's compile and run this puppy. So here you can see this third dog that I created, it ran the default constructor ran the default constructor. So you can see now that here was the Luna dog, here's the Sunny dog, and here is the unknown dog. So what I want you to do now is I want you to come over here in this third dog, and I want you to manually fill in the dog's name and age and weight. Uh, what I want you to do is set the dog's name to Tuna. Uh, set the age to be uh, nine and set the weight to be um, 4.3 pounds. I want you to do that by using method calls. So don't put that in there. Don't put the information in there. I want you to call methods on the dog now, W. So you're going to do W dot something and change the name. W dot something to change the age and W dot something to change the weight. Please do that now. Then print the information about the dog again. Mr. Dominic, do you have a question? All right. Uh, let's see here. Miss Mullen, how do I change the name of tuna, name of the dog to tuna? What are we missing here? Okay, Mr. Brian, what are we missing? This is a string. So we need to put quotation marks there to tell it it's a string. Okay, uh, next up, uh, let's see here. Uh, Mr. Mitty, sir, I need to set the age to nine. Or should I go like this? Okay, just the nine. And then to set the weight to 4.3, like that. Well, let's compile and run this puppy. Oops. Don't need that there. Compile it and run it. And you can see now everything is working. 